Welcome to the Radiant Preneur Rising Show with me, Jess Tomlinson. Interviews to inspire a new movement of leaders and entrepreneurs. The ones who lead with vulnerability and authenticity, stand in visibility, allowing themselves to truly be seen, are fierce and playful and sexy. Choose business as a spiritual practice. Seek collaboration versus competition. No giving back is not an option. It's a necessity. They do it their way. They radiate. They rise. Now, let's rise together. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Radiant Premier Rising Show. I'm Jess Tomlinson, and I'm really excited to be here with you today to interview somebody that I've never met before, but I can already <laughs> tell is a really amazing woman, Keisha Mitchell. Um, we were brought together through one of my previous clients, Shannon Ray. Um, and Shannon's also a dear, dear friend of mine uh, now as well. And they are both in the Bay Area. Keisha mm-hmm. specifically is in Oakland. And so I just left that area. So it feels like a piece <laughs> of, you know, piece of my three-year life is right. coming around. Um, so welcome, Keisha. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I'm super excited to um, just be interviewed by you. I love the whole radiantpreneur. Like I saw it and I was like, yes, you know, <laughs> I love that. So I'm super happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I love when people resonate with the the radiantpreneur or the radiant word. I right. always know that those are like, you know, the soul sisters. Right, right, um, exactly. Yeah. Well, so I only asked one question. The rest of it is just like, you know, we'll see where this goes. Um, And the one question is, how are you currently leaning into your visibility edges in your life, your business? (laughs) Oh, okay. That's a great question, actually, because I, um, I've, you know, I've been a speaker for years and years, even before, you know, my current business, um, whether it was speaking for someone else or, you know, myself. So I love getting on stage. I'm an extrovert and all of that jazz. And I'm finding myself now having to be visible in a more structured way, (laughs) which for me being kind of a rebel, you know, (laughs) being kind of that person that's like, I want to do it my way has been really hard. So it's interesting because the edge, it's visibility, but the edge is like how the visibility is coming about. You know, um, Mm. I started doing um, live video when Periscope first came out. I don't know if you know about Periscope. Yes, I did. I did, I think like three. Oh, really? (laughs) Well, I loved it. I was like one of those people. I was a scoper. I went to the scope, you know, convention and I used to do like every day, right? So I kind of cut my teeth on live video there and I loved it. But then once I really started getting into my business and got all of my clients in and started doing kind of the regular day to day, it just felt like live video was now a chore because I think like we often do, you know, I was too much in my mind about it. It was like, oh, it has to be this way. And I have to have these points. And what am I talking about? And is it, you know, something different? You know what I mean? Like it was just too much in my mind. Um, And so now, you know, with my coaches and and just what I know, my my community wants me more, you know what I mean? (laughs) Like in their presence. And, um, And so I'm like, okay, I have to start going regularly, but it's just, you know, it's pulling something in me um, with that, you know, just that kind of entrepreneur feeling that where we just want to be free and we don't want to be kind of tied down to one day a week or three days a week or something like that. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you for sharing this. This is such, it's such a topic that's up for me right now and for Mm -hmm. people in my community, because I have been specifically a video coach, you know, my partner is a videographer and I tried that out to just be like a video coach and it was just way too narrow for my like, you know, right. expansive personality. Right, right. Um, but the piece around that you're bringing up around like, it's like the structure and flow, right? Like how can we keep it fun, but also be strategic in a way that it's not just doing video for the sake of it. Cause that can be burnout too, right? Totally. And that's what yeah. happened in scope. It was like scoping. Yeah. Like my kids would be like, mommy, are you scoping? Don't put me on video. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was just like, you know, 
know, no purpose to it. And so, yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. It's such, it's such a thing that I'm, I'm dancing with right now. Like I'm even mm. considering like, what would it look like for me to just like only do videos when I'm really feeling passionate about something like it's like super hot for me and I'm just like letting it marinate and burn and then it's almost like really sacred right I do do it like you know coming through you instead of from you right yeah because yeah, mm -hmm. I we're probably similar like I can talk all day my background yeah. is public speaking too I'm like put me up on a stage I'll have plenty to say <laughs> right. uh, yeah, yeah but I don't know. So what, what are you, what are you feeling into for you as you're moving forward into really kind of making it more strategic, as you said, like what feels good for you? Well, you know, I think it's, it's kind of one of the things that I, you know, teach my clients, like with them, I have a, you know, my success system, I call it my triple C success system. And I feel like it is the way that we need to move into any up level, into any journey, right? So no matter where mm -hmm. you are, you know, if it's just your first time out or your 100th, you're still, if you're moving to the next level, you're going mm -hmm. to need clarity, you're going to need courage, and you're going to need confidence, right? Mm -hmm. So I always tell my clients, like, hashtag coaching me first. Like, I don't give you guys anything that I am not doing myself, right? So yeah. For me, it's, it's been about finding that courage, you know, the, because really it, it's about fear. It's about fear that I'm going to do it wrong or, mm -hmm. you know, I'll go out there and maybe I'm saying something and nobody wants to hear it or it's not strategic enough and I'm wasting my time. You know, all mm -hmm. of those things, it doesn't matter how long we've been doing something. If you are moving into the next level and you have a larger community, a larger ear, you know, or even if your prices are higher, right? You know, I, I'm on a different level right now of how I'm bringing clients in. So sometimes that means everything gets a little scary, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's just, it's looking back and saying, you know, where, where, do, where does my strength come from? You know, how do I find that strength to, how do I find that strength to first go live? You know, how did I find that strength to first tell someone what I have can transform your life? Mm -hmm. And I feel into that. I'm very much, very somatic. Like I'm, you know, very much about getting into your body, you know, feel that, that original courage, you know, that, that you had and then put it on the calendar, <laughs> get accountable because I'm so much about accountability, like, mm -hmm. you know, the things to do. Jess, I'm sure you know all the things to do, right? <laughs> you know? Too many, too many. Yeah, too the, many, right? The too many job now do. is unlearning. That's my job right. now. <laughs> right, and like yeah. prioritizing, like what makes the most sense, what, what feels right, you know, what's best for the business. And so really being held accountable for that has been big for me too. Like, this is what's best for you. You know that. Let's do it. When are you going to do it? Great. Call me right after, you know, <laughs> like I need that kind of accountability and often my clients do too. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm curious, like the clarity piece, yeah. how, this is something that I find comes up with so many people. Um, it's like they want to get clear, but then what I know is true, and I heard you say this as well, is that you will evolve. And so there's almost this, like, for me, this, you need to be clear now and just trust that now this is your clarity and then allow for that room to evolve and change and come back to center. How do you guide people through that? Or have you experienced that people have that block? Sure. I, all the time. I mean, that's what, it's why it's my first step. Why clarity is the first thing that we dive into. And um, I think, you know, for a lot of my community, and I don't know if you're like this too, but we tend to be multi-passionate, what I like to call multi-passionate, right? Yeah, you yeah. Know, so I talk to someone, I'm like, hey, you know, so tell me about yourself. They're like, oh, well, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I do the PTA, and then I have this social justice thing that I'm doing, and I also do this line of t-shirts, and then, oh yeah, let me tell you about, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah. So we have all these things that we love to do, and mm. what I find often is clarity is usually most about focus. You know, it's most about kind of bringing it all in, looking at mm -hmm. it and really saying to yourself, like, you know, I talk to women, I call, I call my, my women powerhouses, right? Because I'm like, 
you do a lot of things. And for powerhouse women, you probably do a lot of things really well. Mm -hmm. And what you never get a chance to experience is what if you put all of that energy, all of that power, you know, if you could put it all together and then laser focus it into something, what would happen? We never get a chance to experience that because we're in so many different places. Yeah. So really clarity um, for me, as well as a lot of my clients is about how do you focus on something without losing parts of yourself, right? We always feel like, but if I don't do this, or if I don't concentrate on this, you know, um, and, and we also have a whole module just on, on identity. Like when we move to that next level, you know, you're expanding, you're not changing into a completely different person, but the expansion is real. And, you know, we have held on to so many parts of our identity that we don't even know. We're like, you know, they're clenching and we're like, here, take this from me. And people are like, well, can you unpeel your fingers from, you know, because yeah. we're holding on to these pieces of ourselves that we really don't even want anymore. And we, you know, we live in, in our identity, right? We get certain, certain things. Like for me, um, I'm a night owl, right? I want to get more sleep. I need more sleep. <laughs> but being a night owl ties me to my dad who worked graveyard, mm. you know, and I would always wait up for him. And he just, he just passed last year. So it's oh, been a daddy thing, right? I, I'm total daddy's girl. <laughs> yeah, me too. Right? It's like, you know, we have to kind of, unintertwine ourselves, you know, from these parts of our identity that we are holding on to and we're comfortable and familiar with, but it really doesn't serve us on our path forward. So that for me is really what clarity is about. It's about what is the life you would love to live? You know, mm -hmm. what does that journey look like? And what is the unpeeling? You know, what is the mm -hmm. unpeeling? What is the focusing that you have to do? I hope that answered your question. That oh, <laughs> yes, Keisha. <laughs> Keisha, that is the basis of my work is identity work. And I'm just, it's always fun for me. Maybe, I don't know, it's a, li a little egotistical or something, <laughs> but I love hearing when somebody else is reflecting something that I'm really passionate about. And it just yeah. feels like, Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right all the time. Yes. Um, so thank you for being a fun reflection for me. And I am so with you. Like that identity work is everything. Like it will hold you back from even getting clarity yep. because you are so gripping. Like I know in my own life, I, you know, I'm still unraveling this. Like there are many identities that I grip to and that I'm, I'm afraid of letting go of because they've given me love, they've given me safety, whatever ideas I've created in my head, right? Yep. And like, I want to be a nice person. And so that's like one that I'm really working through. Like <laughs> right now, you know, how can right. I really allow even more of that rebel side, as you said, um, to come out and, and play and just be okay yeah. with if people are, blatantly you know disagreeing or not liking how I'm doing something or whatever right and just right. really honoring like myself and my truth right um and yeah. standing in that right in the the confidence of it I think that's why it's such a big piece or well, one of the reasons why it's such a big piece of my system because like you said like we start off especially for women like men totally don't do this right we start off being like okay I know this might sound egotistical right but it's not it's like the truth yeah. of who yeah. you are you know what I mean mm -hmm. and how you be in life and there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with saying like not only am I radiant? Like, I want to continue to be radiant and to grow in that radiance. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And, yeah, and yes, the identity piece is just, it's huge. And I feel like it's one of the big, the largest hindrances sometimes. Yeah. Are you willing to share like some of the identity pieces that you've had to work through? Yeah, sure. That, um, you know, it, it seems like a really small thing, that whole night owl thing, but <laughs> it's really mm -hmm. huge for me. Like I, yeah. you know, I'm one of these women that I don't care about talking about my age. So I'm 47. I'm proud. Yes. <laughs> right. Oh my God. I love it. I want more women to just be like, I'm this age. Like I'm Thank proud you. of like, I, I earned these years, you know? <laughs> yeah. Life is precious too. I lost um, two friends a few years ago, young Young oh. friends they were 30 32 and 33 and so oh. for me I'm like own your age people you never know right yeah. you know oh mm -hmm. that's 
yeah, that gives me chills. Um, but so, you know, in, in saying that, um, wait, uh oh, I lost my train of thought. What were you? It's okay. You were um, talking about the night owl identity. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. And no, yeah. <laughs> yes. I was like on it, and then the train was like, <laughs> it's okay. It was my fault. I understood. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that night owl piece, it seems really small, but you know, as I'm getting older, um, and, and sinking more into an awareness of my body, which, which mm. for me is a, a very ancient feminine thing that, that I mm. encourage my clients to get back into, um, of really checking in, like, I just need sleep more, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's what my body craves. And, um, and, you know, I have two teenagers and even though I'm not getting up and like getting them dressed anymore you know, they're still waking up at six and seven in the morning to, <clears throat> you know, go to school and um, when is in college. So if I go to sleep at one, two o'clock in the morning, you know, yeah. it's like six hours. And what that means, again, stepping into where I am and the next level and the identity, the being that I want to expand into means I need to be in my zone of genius. You know, I need to be available because I feel like um, yes, I, yes, I am amazing. <laughs> and <laughs> what happens with my clients comes through me, I believe, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yes, I'm great, but, but I feel like I need to be in a place that I can allow myself to be open enough to see what my clients and community needs. And that means being in a place, you know, it's hard to be open to spirit or whatever, intuition, whatever you want to call it, when you're exhausted, you know, when your eyes want to close, because now that means your mind is running and, you know, the clarity isn't there. And so that piece is, is huge for me. Um, and the night owl thing, like, it's been since I was a kid. And that was how, you know, I tied to my dad, my dad, you know, he's, mm -hmm. he's still awake. I'm still awake. I can text him at midnight, you know, <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're still so with him being gone now, it's it's really been tough because now I'm mm. like, oh, am I giving away a piece of myself that ties me so close to my father? But no, mm. of course not. Like, I'm going to be tied. I'm going to be a daddy's girl no matter what. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it's just obviously the identity of being African-American in this industry you know, is a big deal too. Like I go to yeah. the self-care and the different coaching industry things and I'm often one of the very few women of color and almost always the, the yeah. only woman of color on stage. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, and so, and that is not an identity that I'm, I'm trying to get away from, but there are for sure pieces of that and how you know we interact and communicate and view each other and be in the world and society yeah. um that has me hesitate to go into some of these places because i'm like you know are they going to see me for who i am or just whatever mm -hmm. the experience is that we all have in this society of what race is right yeah you know? Um, all of that, you know, all of that kind of is almost, almost comes before me. And so I'm trying to get in front of it, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. And I thank you for bringing that up because I think it's so important for people to hear. And I was at a, a transformational leadership summit mm -hmm. and um, Trudy, Le Trudy LeBron, Tr Trudy LeBro. Have you heard of her, Trudy? I know it sounds a little familiar, but I'm not I know sure. I'm, I'm messing up her last name. I, <laughs> okay. I said LeBron, but mm -hmm. that's LeBron James. I'm right, right. <laughs> making that up. Um, yeah, I can't remember her last name, but her name's Trudy, T R U D I E. Okay. Or maybe no E. Um, and she spoke. She's a diversity trainer, um, mm. specifically for coaches mm. to really help people integrate. Um, you know, equality and just even like how they're communicating, even their stories. She really like woke me up <laughs> to this whole hero's journey and how it doesn't resonate with <laughs> most people of color. They're just like, oh, you know, you, you went and you took a sabbatical and you went to Bali for a year. Well, I'm <laughs> sorry, but most people of color don't resonate with that. And I was yeah. just like, whoa, like it's so, so I'm, I'm bringing this up to say that I, 
I feel like this is so important and I'm so glad that you're bringing this up on the show because more and more of us need to be aware yeah. of, you know, different people in the industry because it is mostly white folks like preaching right. to white <laughs> folks. So yeah. Yeah. It is. And so. and you know, it's still like it's it's so interesting. I've been and it's it's interesting too because you know, I have what I want to do right. And I find that each time I come into a place, I I get into this conversation. I keep being like, spirit, this is not mine to do. Like this is not yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. this is not what's on my little sheet of <laughs> You know, right. Wanting to yeah. cover. You know, but um I'm finding that just like, you know, with anything, another thing I encourage my clients to do is like really um step into the truth of of who you be and what your life is like. You know what I mean? It's so easy to kind of latch on to and we've been seeing that in society a lot, but latch on to kind of the group think, right? Or what people have always thought or just to agree. People are saying stuff and you're like, I don't know if I agree, but oh yeah, yeah. Because that's how we connect. You know, we connect in agreement. You know what I mean? Right, it feels safe. It feels like you're part of the, the tribe totally. or whatever. Yeah. You're like, yes, I hear you sister, yes, yes. But mm -hmm. it's, you know, what we need to do when we are really wanting to expand who we are and get closer mm -hmm. to what is really calling us in life, it means getting closer and closer to really the truth of our being. And, um, and it can sometimes be, you know, you know, that's an edge, like that's an edge that mm -hmm. takes a lot of courage, you know, to, mm -hmm. to kind of get past and get over. Because like I'm saying, you know, even though I'm like, oh, you know, why does this keep coming up for me? Like on stage talking about it, you know, or, yeah. you know, with a mentor or something. And, um, but it's like, well, maybe this is yours to do. And the reality is it's my truth. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like I have to think about it. Even like, I love that you said, <clears throat> excuse me, the stories. Because sometimes, yeah. you know, if I'm doing one of my events and stuff, and I'm like, I'm telling my own story, and I'm thinking, well, are all the white women in the room going to connect with this? <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. Like, you know? And so there's, there's, there's a couple of pieces of that. There's one that we all connect to a story. It's like, it doesn't yeah. matter. We can share a dozen stories. We're still going to find connections because, yeah. you know, we're one. Like that oneness is, is my whole, you know, <laughs> that's what I believe. Yeah. And there are still, you know, these paradigms that exist that we think are norms and they're actually not. And mm -hmm. so it's the expansion of being willing to kind of disrupt those things in our minds. Say, oh, God, yeah. I never thought about that before. I it, that's not true. Like, wow, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and if it's true for me, maybe that's not true for you. And that's completely OK, because now we can yes. explore each other. It's not about moving away from each other because we're different. Now we can yeah. explore and find out these new and different things. And, oh, you have a different perspective on this. That blows my mind. You know what I mean? So, yes. Yeah. Yes. I love this because it, it is all tied together if we come back to the identity piece. Yes. Because it's like people are so attached to their identities, right? And like how they see something and I'm right and this keeps me safe. And it's really the, the shedding of all those identities that allows us to be okay and be open and receptive to other perspectives and still be aligned with our own truth and know that other people's perspectives and input does not make our truth wrong. However, it does help us evolve and grow. Right? Yeah. And it, yeah, and it's yeah. so valuable. Like I said, this on, on stage once, it's kind of like, you know, going into like a flower shop or something like no one, <clears throat> you know, the, the different colors and shapes and sizes are what attracts you. You know what I mean? It's like, oh my God, look at this and look at that. You know, no yeah. one walks in there and is just like, oh no, I don't see color. Like, no, of course you see color. That's the beautiful thing about it, you know? Yeah. Um, well, and I want to just say in the identity piece, even the, the pieces of our identity that we're, like I have this, um, this thing that I do with my clients when they first on their onboarding process of really mm -hmm. looking at your labels right? Mm -hmm. What are the labels that you love? Like, I'm a Taurus, you know, I'm a whatever, <laughs> yeah. you know, black girl magic, you know, whatever the yeah, <laughs> you right, know, right. labels are, right? We have mm -hmm. the labels that we love, that we want to slap on ourselves. And then we have those labels that we don't necessarily like. 
you know? And so I have my clients go through that process because the truth is all we are living inside of those labels. So mm-hmm. even if it's something like, you know, obviously, you know, we're from the Bay area, right? Yeah. There are a lot of people that are like, I'm progressive, you know, no, I'm totally, you know, this way. And sometimes we need to disrupt those identities too, even though yes. for you, it feels like, no, this is the right thing. If you're mm-hmm. holding on too tight of what <laughs> may seem like the right thing, you don't get the opportunity to even expand into that. You know, yes. now it closes you off of something that a paradigm that you didn't even know was there. Ah, know, I love it. I do a similar process with my clients. Ah, I love I, it. Yes. It's like even those good labels, if you want to name them good, really can trap us. Like I, um, I've been a guest expert mentor coach um, in one of my friends programs and specifically coaching people around their visibility and what keeps coming up is the attachment to these good labels and i'm like look you can want to step into something that feels really powerful and if you are really attached to being seen like that even if feel if it feels good even if it feels powerful right. that is still an attachment and that is still going to hold you back yep. from you know being visible because the reality is when you're visible there is a possibility of being judged it's just yep. going to happen it's just gonna happen. <laughs> right <laughs> totally yes yeah so Uh-oh. true so true i love this keisha thank you for for diving into these identities and it just feels so important um especially I'm today cu- yeah. like yeah you know, today like we and we're starting to see so many different kinds of women come into the limelight and we can, and it's mm-hmm. like we can finally see how rich it actually makes the landscape you know we've been scared yeah. of society for so long of bringing different people on and mm-hmm. and i just feel like you know this whole era of trump has really set us up for allowing more people to stand and, and you yeah. know, be really clear about their voice and say, I don't care. Like, yes, I'm gonna be judged, but I don't care if this mm-hmm. needs to be said. And I think we're finally seeing like, oh, this doesn't, doesn't mess up everything. It actually makes everything richer. Like, it's okay if I don't agree. Like it, it opens yeah. up the, you know, the conversation, so. Yeah. yeah, I'm so with you. I think that we just needed to be woken up as a society to really (laughs) unfortunately have that extreme polarization so that people are like, wait a minute, like I don't feel this way, like, and kind of shaken, you know? Yeah. 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 Big stuff. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) Yeah. Big topics. We are going deep. They're going deep. (laughs) But it's our daily life, right? I always tell people, I'm like, you know, let's it's just about the daily. Like, you know, what is happening in your day? You want to visualize? Visualize what your one day would be like. It's not about visualizing Mm. the finish line. It's about visualizing what would my life be like, you know, that this vision that I have inside of a regular day of waking up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's our day-to-day experience. So why not dive into that? And that tends to be deep. <laughs> yeah. I'm so curious. How did you get into this work? Ooh, so like I mentioned before, I'm one of those multi-passionate souls. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? Um, so, But I've always had this thread of, of leadership and and I, I also call myself a creator of community because I've always mm. loved um, community and bringing people together. So I was raised by my dad, right? So my dad was like your mom and dad. Mm. And um, within that, it always gave me like this this kind of awe for women. Like I would, I would you know, as a kid, when I would go over to my friend's house, I'd be like, let's play dress up in your mom's closet. And they'd be like, we have to do that again? We did that like the last time. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, I grew up with a guy, with a man, and my brother. So it was like, you know, masculine energy. And I have a lot of that masculine energy, but I've I've always been, like, entranced by the feminine. Always, you know. So so with that, I've always wanted to, like, gather women and pull women together. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it allowed me, because I had this reverence, kind of, um, for women, um, it allowed me to, how can I say, I kind of feel like <clears throat> one of my superpowers is like kind of being able to laser in and see beyond the facade of your potential, mm-hmm. you know? And so that's how I would look at women. Like no matter what was going on, I would be like, oh, but 
you what you could do, you know, what you could be or what I really see you as in the moment, but just, you know, with all this stuff on top. Yeah. Um, and I did that throughout, you know, high school and different clubs and programs and then in leadership. I was class president and homecoming queen and all of this. And I would always have different groups running in my home. Um, and throughout that, I've always been an accountant. <laughs> always been doing oh, wow. kind of, yeah, money stuff. So total left and right brain. I was a professional yeah. dancer for 20 years. Um, oh, really? What type of dance? I'm curious. Yeah, traditional African dance and modern. Oh, amazing. <laughs> I did dance as well. I wasn't professional, but I did dance for a long time. Yeah, so dancer for life. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like dancer for life. So yeah. um yeah, and in that, when I had my, um, like I mentioned, I have a, a daughter who's 17, soon to be 18. She keeps reminding me. Wow. <laughs> and my son <laughs> is 15. And um, when I had them, um, I had already been in a few of my friends and families, like um, births, you know, hospital births. And so it was really important to me out to have home births. So I had two home births. And with that, I just became such a birth junkie. And so I got certified and, and, um, being a child uh, <laughs> a, um, certified educator, childbirth educator. Oh, right? So I would have, you know, I would have couples come into my home and I was always about, and again, I'm a, such a rebel. So I'm like, I'm going to yeah. teach you this, but what I'm really teaching you, <laughs> and it would always be, you know, this connection yeah. and this courage and, and, you know, how do you yeah. connect as a couple? What does it mean to build a foundation? Like, yeah, you're mm -hmm. having a baby, but what you really want you know, is this foundation to last, you know? Yeah. So long story short, done all of that. And, um, I've, I've also been studying transformation. I'm like a neuroscience geek. I love transformation. How, what, what happens in your brain as you're changing yeah. and transforming, you know, what happens spiritually um, with you as you're changing and transforming. So I studied that for years and I would invite friends over to my house, like in January, and be like, we're having a vision board party. And they would get here and I'd be like, so actually you're going to run through this process that I've created because I'm trying <laughs> to manifest some stuff and I don't want to do it alone. So you guys, so I would always yes. bring them in under the facade of vision boards and we would do so much, you know, so many other things and people were getting great results from it. And my husband was like, there are 50 women all around the floor in our living room. Like, can you, what are you going to do with this? Yeah. They <laughs> so it turned into, this, yeah. yeah. So it turned into workshops and mm -hmm. um, I was like, you know, I am a creative community. I'm a facilitator. I'm not a coach. I'm not a coach. You know, I kept saying, um, and people were like, yeah, that's great. So can you not be a coach and just get on the phone with me and help me out? <laughs> You know? Yes. I ended up getting certified and it's kind of, you know, how all And then here you going. are. Yeah. Wow. That is amazing. I love that oh, you have a story. <laughs> yeah. But I love that. I feel like it just sometimes the super, super linear path, you know, is is great for some people. Yeah, and totally. For for me, I tend to resonate with people who've kind of had like like you, like all these different pieces, and I can just see how they fit together right. to serve the women that you serve, and to, you know, really serve the the vision that you're creating in the world. It just makes so much sense to me. The like childhood piece, like right. foundational with the partners and relationship, and like accounting, and <laughs> it's wow. so amazing how it all works together. Doesn't seem like it would at all, but. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, I'll go have a session with some of my clients and be like, oh, I can pull from this or, oh, I can pull from this. And this is my, you know, maybe what they need. So it's true. Yeah. And I think all of our journeys are like that. You know, we all have journeys that are kind of integrated. We just can't see it at the time, obviously. Yeah. Oh, I love this. What, I'm curious, what are some of the themes that you find are very, very prevalent with the women that that you help in your community? Are there like big ones that are maybe even present right now? I know you just had an event, right? A live yeah, event. Yes, I did. So maybe, um, yeah. yeah, and so throughout that, so I'll tell you two of the things that I really found from the events specifically. So I do an annual okay. event, it's called Activate Your Calling, right? Because I, I call myself a success coach um, and my, my kind of focus is really almost like guiding women into being a powerhouse by like acknowledging what the world is called or that your heart is calling you to do, making time for it because, <laughs> you know, our lives, right? 
and then actually mm -hmm. taking action on it. And I think we tend to get stuck kind of at, you know, each of those pieces. Um, yeah. So that's my annual event. It's a three-day event. It was beautiful, really amazing, the community. Um, I just love bringing women together. I just think things happen in a room, you know, um, especially if, if you take decide, like I always tell women, when you say yes to coming to the event, that's the first, that, that's the activation. Like that's the yeah. first activation. Because actually saying, I am going to take time, energy, money out for myself. Like nothing we did in that event was for their kids, you know, for their husband, for their significant other, you know, for their work, whatever it was. It was like, this is for me. Like this is my calling and figuring out who I am to be in the world. Um, <clears throat> so I would say from that, um, definitely the multi-passionate and the focus thing mm -hmm. is one of the huge things that comes up. Um, I think, you know, for women, we kind of, I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not into, really into that kind of stuff, but I think we have um, almost like abandonment issues kind of, but without, with the various identities and passions that we have, you know? So we are mm -hmm. so afraid to kind of let go of things, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And and we have this idea that like, we don't have time, you know, like mm -hmm. I have to do it all now. And that's what I kept finding. Like, yes, I'm doing this, you know, but I also want to do this and I can't stop doing this, but I'm really good at this. You know what I mean? Like all of these things and this yeah. attachment is goes really deep, you know, yeah. it, it really goes deep. And, and it's like, again, about the identity thing. Like if I let go of this piece of myself, who am I then? what you know what does that say about me does that mean even when it comes to people and environments like you saying you know just moving back to vegas and realizing santa cruz wasn't for me for you you know yeah it's huge right it's like it i can like, already feel myself shifting and like oh right you know and acknowledging that and i'm sure you know i mean i don't know how long it took you to say like okay yes we're gonna move but you know for some mm -hmm. people it takes them years to decide it's okay to shed that piece of yourself or mm -hmm. or even to put it away for later you know mm -hmm. um so that was one of the big things just um the focus and again and that focus and clarity are kind of intertwined again just in society you know focus is so hard for us right now like we are okay. so distracted by everything you know we're inundated with information with other people's lives that we are looking yeah. at and comparing ourselves to you know yeah. like we're so inundated with so many things that focus has become very devalued um and if we think about like back in the day quote unquote you know the people that are masters you know that that really got mastery in a thing they were very focused and you know they did apprenticeships you know they, they were apprentices mm -hmm. under people for years, you know, they studied this one thing and they went into a hole and they did just that. And that is how they became, become masters. Now, of course, times have changed. No one needs to go back and, you know, do carpentry for four years under someone before they can build something, right? You can watch yeah. a YouTube video. <laughs> but I do think there is a level of um, heart mastery even that mm -hmm. we achieve and accomplish when we allow ourselves to and, and really what it comes down to is trust ourselves enough to focus on something because when we're saying but i can't and i have to do it's because really and and you know my clients always say like you're gonna get mad at me so it's okay i can take it get mad you can curse at me <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm saying is really you don't trust yourself to succeed at this thing yeah. you think you're going to fail so all of these other things are backups Yes, I know you're passionate about them. Yes, I know you do them well. But the truth is, you're afraid to only have one lane to go down because you're scared of what's at, what may be at the end of that lane and what it could be a dead end, you know? And then you don't have anywhere else to go. And I'm just like, it's not true. Let us, let's disrupt and disarm that idea yeah. in our minds that so for, the thing is, is that path could be a dead end. And guess what? somebody's going to come riding along and say, jump on with me. I have a whole new path for us to go into. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah. So yeah, that's been, that's been one of the big, just that focus and allowing ourselves and trusting ourselves to go with what we're being called toward um, yeah. is a huge one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love this. I feel like I was reading something the other day, just how rooted our lineage is as women, um, just for survival mm-hmm. and how it's just mm-hmm. so deep in our, our, you know, our bones and our very being and how much unwiring and like really creating of the safety. And I believe we really do it in groups of women. Yes. And that's how we begin to feel safe again. And we begin to have the courage as you teach yes. and the confidence to really step forward. So I love, when I saw that you do a live event, I was like, yes, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because it's like, it's just become so much like drinking the Kool-Aid of like, build an online business, build an online right. business, which is awesome. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and, and. <laughs> I truly like uh, this is something I'm committing to as we move into 2020 to get back to more in-person community because I that's how I started and then I kind of you know I've I've had a rough few years with my friends dying and so I kind of that was all I really had was online because I couldn't my energy just couldn't handle even and thank God for it right you know it's good to have the avenues right yeah yes yeah and that taught me a whole bunch of other lessons and (laughs) now feeling that pull like I know and it just like you probably know you're meant to bring people together in person that's a part of like who you are right right totally yeah, yeah. so I, I'm so that happened. it's like it's like knowing yes. having a magic trick and being like well, I can't just stick it in like it's an amazing magic trick like you know amazing yeah. magic happens when we do this and you know it's hard to just like keep it you know bottled up somewhere so yeah yeah and it's like um our nervous systems need that like in-person connection right to to even like clear all the clutter and like all the distractions so that you can get more clear as far as your truth and what's pulling you forward and just joy man just I mean when I think of like the laughter that came from you know I, I got you know my photos back from my photographer and like watching those women's faces you know light up and like dancing and laughing and like them in a group really like you know pouring into each other like is just it's what we need and and I so love that you brought up that piece just about um about you know it really being oh goodness it wasn't um the identity piece but oh the survival Mm. because it's so it's so 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 true and um, and this one of the things that we talked about at Activate Your Calling is just how women have achieved mastery at survival. And I'll say, especially women of color, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Only because I know, you know. Especially, yeah. Um, mastery at survival. And the path that we are, are resistant to go down is thriving. Like, you, you, we have surviving covered. Whew, I just got chills. Just yeah. Right? Wow. You know? What does that look like? Like we, you know, I always tell people like, they're like, oh, and this, but I can do this. And well, I have this. And I'm like, all those wells and butts, that's survival. What about hands? What about expand? What would it actually look like for you to thrive? What does that mean in your life? You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's so rare that we even allow us, like, again, trust ourselves to go down that path because it feels like, oh, but if I go down that path, then I'll feel all of this and I'll have to come back to life. And I'm like, no, you don't have to. That's why my business is called Elevate Your Now. That gets about yeah. elevation and how can we bring that into the now? It's not about next year or when I get this or when I can do this. It's about bringing small pieces into the now. And just like you said, that coming together is bringing yeah. it into the now. You know, feeling yeah. that joy, that expansion and that inspiration from everyone in the room is like oh my god like like that energy is palpable Mm -hmm. like take Mm -hmm. that with you you know and expand on it yeah oh this is so good I'm (laughs) I'm really feeling (laughs) I'm feeling just the energy behind this conversation of just really really getting present honoring our truth trusting that like we can create 
the safety that we need. We need to do this in community. There is clarity that is available to us if we <sighs> really trust and and be in the now. Be in the now. Oh, whew. it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> I know. We're not, yes, everybody watching, we are not denying that this shit is easy. Okay, like we we are honoring that yes. it does take support. And so please find yourself community, find yourself a coach, find yourself a mentor, whatever you need in yes. order to be able to really, really find that joy. I love that you said that too, Tisha. No, really. And, and, and believe it. Like I always tell my clients, you know, one of the ways to kind of just start believing is, I, you know, I always say like, I'm not, I'm not one of those coaches. Like that's going to be like, yeah, happy, happy, joy, joy. I'm like, this shit is hard. Like it's, it's yeah. hard. You've, you've built years of habitual thinking and, you know, years of what you thought you could do, what you can't do, you know, and all of those things. Like it is a hard process. It's not easy, but it can be done with ease. And so that's what I like to, you know, encourage yes. people to think, like, let, allow the reality of the situation, you know, because we always have in the self-help thing, people are like, you guys are all about denial, you know, and all of this. And I'm like, no, yeah. allow yourself to recognize the truth yeah. of what it will take. I mean, that's why there are coaches. That's why people are like, can, can I do a session? I'm like, no, you can do nine months because you know yeah. what? <laughs> that's what it's going to take. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. To start disrupting and breaking down these paradigms and these ways of beliefs and allow yourself to know it's not easy. I can acknowledge that that will resonate with you because you know, it's not allow mm -hmm. yourself to say it's not easy, but how yeah. can I get it done with ease? And just like yeah. you said, Jess, getting yourself a community, getting yourself, mm -hmm. you know, folks around you that are on the journey it doesn't necessarily mean friends and family or your they love you you love them it's about getting people that are on the journey and understanding mm -hmm. what it means to be on that journey you know yeah. and coming together and getting a coach and a mentor or someone that you really resonate with yeah thank you for saying that yeah yeah you're welcome Oh, this is so good. I could talk to you forever. <laughs> but as we wrap up, I, I would just love to hear what what's pulling you forward. What are you excited about in you know 2020 or just even the, the next few months? Um, I am I'm super excited about well, my my group program is about to start. I do a, a yearly uh, nine months of um what I love to call alchemy. So my group is called Ooh, alchemy. good name. Right? <laughs> alchemy is it's all about, you know, making kind of the the ordinary extraordinary through what seems like magic, right? And so it's like mm. would you like your life to be like magic, you know? <laughs> I love that idea of alchemizing, you know, your journey through life. Um, so I'm super excited about that because again, it's, you know, now we're bringing women together and really going on a journey, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's the, the friendships that come out of that. It's really the, the support and holding each other up, you know, that I've found through, through the other, this will be my fourth cohort. Um, mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, watching these women, like my, the last one, I always laugh because one of the women was like, you know, I kind of just, you know, was like, yeah, whatever, Keisha, when you first said at the beginning, like, you know, when you pour into yourself, you'll mm -hmm. see that, you know, not only do, do you change, but the people around you and out a layer and out a layer, you know, like pouring into yourself will allow you then to make other people's lives better because it feels like, well, no, I have to give to my kids. I have to give to my work. I have to do all these things. I don't have time to give to myself, but I'm like, it happens. And at the end, she was like, you know, I was just like, yeah, yeah, that's some BS. But in truth, her husband, her and her husband's relationship got better and deeper. Mm -hmm. Her kids, she was going to work and people were like, why are you smiling all the time? And she was like, I didn't even realize I wasn't smiling during yeah. the 50 hours, 50, 60. Actually, when she started, she was working 60 hours a week. Oh my God. I got her down to 40 and making more money. You know what I mean? So it's like, no, when you start pouring into yourself and recognizing what your heart is calling you to be, do, and have, everything gets better. So I'm super excited about Alchemy starting. 
Um, mm. Yeah, I love my, I always say like, you know, I love my clients. I know you're supposed to have this distance, you know, or whatever, but I'm like, they're like, uh, you know? yeah, mine too. I know. I always call like, for me personally, like I, I have really good boundaries though. So I think that's where yeah. you're able, when you have good boundaries, your, your clients can be best friends. Like for totally. me, they're like my biz besties, you know? Yeah. Yes. Um, beautiful, that. Keisha. I love that. That sounds like an amazing journey. And I can just imagine these women are just, wow. Like even just being around you, is like <laughs> you're such a light of inspiration. So. And I definitely have my, you know, <laughs> trust me. Don't, don't we all. I about that with my clients. I'm like, yeah. that posting me first stuff is real. Like I'm doing it right along with you guys. It might just be a different level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the beauty of it though, right? Like is when we're on that journey and we just allow ourselves to ride through it and not have to be like at the high all the time. It just makes it so much more potent. So alchemize those, those right, times, right? Too, yep. yeah <laughs> beautiful um, is this there was anything? so amazing i Yay! feel like it was just oh, like a, i'm like yeah I know. thank you because it was such a like perfect yeah perfect. i know <laughs> i'm so excited to get to know you more and yeah. and um yeah i so believe in your work because it just yeah. resonates with my heart so much so thank you for sharing just all your wisdom and like the very last thing i want to ask you is there anything on your heart that you haven't got the opportunity to share or last words um that you want to leave everyone with um you know i i think and this isn't like some you know quote you know some amazing thing but i think like what you were just talking about what we just were mentioning about kind of you know the ups and downs and being able to be real you know like i said i just came off of you know my father passing um i had the first real injury of my life in the beginning of the year my um i ruptured my achilles tendon and so you know i was like in the bed literally you know i couldn't do anything for months it disrupted my business it disrupted you know everything and i learned so many wonderful lessons so i think uh, what I would like to leave people with is like shit happens, like life happens, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we need to have, especially as women and especially in this day and age where the world mm -hmm. is calling us to be in more leadership and to be in, in more of a heart centered being in the world, um, mm -hmm. like find yourself a community find yourself women around you and it's not doesn't say anything against men it's just what happens when you can come together with like-minded women that really um you know can be supportive and inspiring um find yourself a mentor find yourself a coach someone that can believe in you and see the potential in you more than you can see in yourself and regardless of whether you're crawling on the floor or at the top of the mountain like they're holding that space for you um, i just really think that's important now because life happens like life mm -hmm. is life but we still want to show up as our most divine and heart-centered self so that the world can be better Mm, beautiful i love it thank you so much what's your favorite place for people to connect with you um my favorite place would be my facebook group uh, powerhouse women rising um mm -hmm. and it's just you know fun place it's not like we don't do anything super you know but i do well people say that and they're like yeah right keisha you have us work you know <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have fun and you will work on yourself as well but yeah. but yeah, and I'm all over on Instagram and Facebook. But um, if you're not connecting with me in person, I would love for you to connect with me in the group. Yeah. Beautiful. I love that. And we'll put all the links um, over in the show notes um, so you guys can connect with Keisha, find the link to her group. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, you can always search that on Facebook as well. Just put it in the search function and you can oh. join her group. Um, but this episode is 32. So the link will be jessicatomlinson.com slash show dash 32. All right. Thank you so much, Keisha. You're so welcome. Yeah. I'm so appreciative of you, Jess, and the work that you're doing in the world. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. All right, everyone. Bye for now.